All right, so I'm back here with the second part of my Hurricane Katrina presentation. Um, back just back to where I left off. You got to be okay as a leader with people challenging your idea. Um, I, in a world where there's so many different perspectives and opinions on how to do things, not everyone's going to agree with your idea. So you have to be okay with being challenged or else... Um, I think it's going to make your job a lot tougher. And if you, um, take it personally and then just kind of go about your own and make your own decisions without any other opinions or anyone challenging you, then I think that's, uh, it's going to lead you into failure. Um, so next slide. So we have decide. So the ability to make decisions was a, was very um, um, noticeable that it was not happening during Hurricane Katrina. Um, the delayed decision making made the whole process a lot slower. Um, it delayed, requ delayed requests for help, slowed evacuation. So uh, the inability to decide can be costly. You can see that um, with the $150 billion damage is, uh, that occurred. And each decision has an outcome. And people look to the government. So each decision has an outcome. During this, um, the governor of New Orleans uh, decided to reach out to the president and uh, say, they, like they need help. They need, um, she, she sent a request in for help, but she didn't specify, um, what, like what help do you need? Um, she needed to, and that, this was just after, uh, they decided to declare a state of emergency, um, which I would say is a good decision. But then after that, you, you, they're told what the, magnitude of this hurricane could be and the mayor of new orleans thought ah well let's let's wait it out see see if it's gonna get worse i don't think a mandatory evacuation is necessary so it was it, he didn't order a mandatory evacuation he uh, more so just said if you want to evacuate uh, to be safe go right ahead and on the other hand the governor was um, the governor from Baton Rouge was, was telling people and encouraging them to go door to door and, uh, persuade their neighbors to get out now to evacuate, although there wasn't a mandatory evacuation. And this delayed decision-making from the government ultimately could have, if it wasn't, if it didn't go this way, could have helped save, um, lots of people or at least, uh, get them out of harm's way instead of ending up uh, stuck in the Superdome where they held people for shelter. Um, there was no, it was known before roughly 111,000 people um, didn't have a form of transportation and knowing that data, they should have made a decision on helping those people get out and get uh, uh, maybe some points of, the set locations throughout the city where they could get on a bus and get out of town safely instead of uh, traveling by foot to somewhere like the Superdome to stay safe when it was already too late um, when the mandatory evacuation was uh, sent out. So anticipate. The governments, they did a good job at anticipating, I would say. Um, so in 2004, they did a simulation called Hurricane, Compa Hurricane Pam. And so uh, regarding anticipation, to improve one's ability to anticipate, there needs to be research conducted and simulations tried, which is exactly what happened with this Hurricane Pam. Um, they knew, they anticipated that New Orleans was a location known for maybe a disaster like this to occur. Um, so they, 
They ran this simulation drill in 2004, and it almost completely destroyed New Orleans. Um, unfortunately, the recovery plan uh, was not completed within the year of this, obviously, in 2004, and then Hurricane Katrina in 2005. Um, <coughs> oh, sorry. Bless me. Um, so analyzing all outcomes, you got to anticipate the unintended consequences, um, the delayed decisions, the lack of communication, um, the decisions you do make, what could go wrong, what could go bad, and how can you act from there. You got to you gotta anticipate um, what could happen and have a plan in place for those consequences, trying to stay, I guess, ahead of um, the disaster and, and have somewhere to go uh, right away from each move. Um, the Le Levy's on the government was on the local government to make sure they were up to standard. Um, through this Hurricane Pam simulation, they knew uh, the Levy's weren't gonna they weren't gonna hold. They were gonna um, intensify the flooding, and that's exactly what happened. Um, they were not up to standard, and they were not able to hold all the water in. There was also um, emergency response plans in place, but they were too specific. Um, that that being said, what I mean is they couldn't adapt to um, a disaster to the extent of Hurricane Katrina. And if the plans would have been reviewed, they could have anticipated that and made better plans for maybe Hurricane specifically or whatever, whatever that would be. But um, that's on, I'd say, the government and all the other parties involved to go over the plans and, and make sure um, they can be adaptable in all uh, aspects. So interpret. Um, <clears throat> this was an issue. There's unfamiliarity with roles and responsibilities um, under the National Response Plan and National Incident Management System. Um, the, in, during, through those plans, not everyone knew their roles, um, which shows me that Although they anticipated um, a disaster of this extent with the simulation, they um, did not take advantage of the simulation. They didn't. Uh, they they need to review and analyze the past decisions and uh, even in the simulation what was done. But it, it's hard to go through an emergency or anything for that matter if the people on board to help and prevent and recover. Uh, a disaster don't know their roles and their responsibilities um, there was a lot of overlapping regarding that whether it was with local and federal government or state and federal government and that led to a lot of a lot of not a lot of action being done um, in those areas of overlapping and understanding the data and plans once again um, that's with communication uh, regardless of you can anticipate what's going to happen if you're not understanding um, your roles and the data and so on then um, it's going to be an issue and especially something like this there's new data constantly coming that needs to be interpreted um, through all hours of the day there's de there'll be data coming in uh, so the storm going from a a, or a, a one to a five um, you got to realize when it's when it's climbing like that you you gotta start looking at what you've done in the past and what plans you have in place and what is gonna interpret what's gonna be best to uh, help everyone that's gonna be affected. <clears throat> so learn from past mistakes. Um, everyone needs to know their roles um, in the future. Uh, through the simulation, they should have learned from, from that. Um, once again, that shows it wasn't taken advantage of. They need to review and analyze their past decisions and their unfamiliarity with plans. So they need to they need to address that and become the government needs to address that and make sure everyone knows their specific roles. <clears throat> and because of um, the the lack of knowing um, where everyone was supposed to be and what they were supposed to do, the Post Katrina Emergency Management Reform Act was put into place. And this act, it had, it was grouped into multiple different sections and roles. 
Um, I believe it was 12 to be exact, but it just helps. It helped uh, kind of more flat out uh, align the roles of each section, um, who's in charge of the roles, among those roles, who, what positions are where and how they're going to help um, during a disaster like this, um, say for the next hurricane. And Congress also created a separate piece of legislation uh, where if it's a catastrophic incident, um, FEMA director will report to Security of Homeland Security. But if it's a major disaster, FEMA director would report to uh, um, other specified DHS officials. So this again, this helps with the uh, um, take away the overlapping that was happening during Hurricane Katrina and more so flat out tell everyone um, the roles that they are they're supposed to be attending and what they're supposed to be doing throughout this uh, disaster. And then just some positive impacts. Um, so the post Katrina Emergency Reform Act um, was put into place, which is which was a positive impact for future um, hurricanes, future disasters. Once again, um, like I said, it's it helps out with the roles and responsibilities of everyone and uh, kind of breaks it down and, and um, lowers the confusion. There was also there was a $10.4 billion aid package um, for the recovery process and then an additional $51.8 billion, which was signed off from uh, President Bush and approved by Congress. And then there was $29 billion for in aid for the victims, um, for all the people affected. And with those, with the billion dollar aid packages, there were 7,200 National Guard troops deployed um, to come in to areas like the Superdome um, and other areas throughout town to help, uh, help, re help recovery process, help with people um, needing medical help. And then on top of that, it, it, this was just kind of a situation that during the recovery could bring um, the nation and a lot of more people together and so show how unified the nation is. Um, for example, Red Cross brought in over 74,000 volunteers. Um, There's over 160,000 shelters provided and uh, more than seven and a half million hot meals um, provided for people in need. Um, so that just shows uh, the, the positive impact in a sense that it could bring um, the nation together and um, how many people wanted to help out and uh, restore um, everything that was taken from the people of the uh, southern Gulf Coast. And that um, concludes my presentation on Hurricane Katrina. Thanks for listening.